Welcome back to the next episode in our continuing series of virtual press conferences here at CES Digital 2021. My name is Dave Leon, a partner here at Showstoppers, and on behalf of my entire team, I would like to thank you for joining us and, of course, wish you a very happy and healthy New Year. Today, we are excited to be highlighting 25 companies and featuring seven companies from Petra, the Taiwan External Trade Development Council. First, let me welcome to our show, Tim Baharin. Tim is recognized as one of the leading industry consultants, analysts, and futurists covering the field of personal computers and consumer technology. Tim has been with Creative uh, uh, Strategies since 1981 and has served as a consultant to most of the leading hardware and software vendors in the industry, including IBM, Apple, Xerox, Hewitt Packard, Dell, AT&T, Microsoft, and numerous others. I look forward to having Tim join us and tell us more about himself when he comes on shortly. Good day. I'm Tim Beharin, President of Creative Strategies. As Dave mentioned, I've been covering the industry since 1981 and had a chance to look at a lot of products and a lot of companies. Trade organizations and organizations like Tate Trade Trip play an incredibly important role in advancing the technologies that they represent. Today, we're going to look at seven different companies from uh, that are work, have been working with Tetra and Tetra working with them. I got a chance to look at all of the products that are going to be introduced today, and they represent some very important sectors in technology. Um, our first company today is Advantech, and I'd like to introduce the product sales manager Andrew Lund. Andrew Lund from Advantech. Thanks, uh, Tim. Appreciate that. It's good to be on here with you. Um, I'm going to take a few minutes and explain something from Advantech uh, that's, uh, w that we won this award for. There's two products, and I'm going to provide some technology or, or some background to the technology to help people understand that. So we're going to be looking at uh, a vibration sensor and a gateway. You can see the, the part numbers there. If you go to the next slide, um, what I, I want to do, because we have some limited time and there's a lot of different technologies that folks are going to be seeing today, um, I wanted to explain some of the background here. So I'm going to explain what LoRaWAN is. It's a, it's a wireless technology that these products use, but I'll explain that a little bit more. Uh, I want to talk about what vibration sensing is and then why you would use LoRaWAN for vibration sensing. So if you would go to the next slide. Okay. Uh, this kind of helps people um, place LoRaWAN in context with other wireless technologies. So, of course, we're all familiar with things like Bluetooth, very short range, Wi-Fi, longer range. Zigbee is a, a meshing technology, uh, if it's frequency shift key. Um, and, of course, you could put uh, cellular LTE technology on here, too. What makes LoRaWAN unique um, is, is several things, and these things make it uh, actually pretty well suited for IoT applications, specifically in the industrial space. And I'll show an example of that. But basically, it's long range, it's low power, it uses a star topology. In other words, it's point to point, not mesh. Uh, it's quite secure, low, uh, low cost, both uh, from a CapEx and an OpEx side, bi directional, and it's, it's a global. Uh, it, it's a global standard. It's interoperable. So it's got a lot of um, a lot of things going for it when you think about using it for a, a wireless IoT uh, uh, technology. Um, so uh, go to the next slide, please. I'll, uh, I'll I'll break this down a little bit more. So okay. So now that we've said, all right, here's what LoRaWAN is. It's this low power, long range, secure wireless IoT protocol. Let's shift and we'll talk about what vibration sensing is. So you'll hear, I, I put my little kind of tongue in cheek, <laughs> my own definition here of what vibration sensing is. Specifically, what I wanted to do is help people place it within the discipline of condition-based monitoring. So you, you'll hear when people talk about um, kind of, you know, relative buzzwordy type things like uh, industry 4.0 or, or, or things like that. You'll hear phrases like uh, condition-based monitoring. You'll hear preventive maintenance. Um, and vibration sensing is a, a kind of a core building block of those uh, uh, of those ideals or goals that we're striving towards, because um, 
it's when machines start to fail, they start to vibrate. And you know that from your, it could be your ceiling fan or, or <laughs> and it, really a lot of different things. You know that they, when they vibrate, they start to fail. So let's look at some examples of machines that are monitored. I, I just have some little simple pictures here, but water pumps, um, ventilation motors, compressors, conveyors. Every time you turn on the tap, and water comes out, it's pressurized, and that pressure comes from a pump. Every time you turn on the stove and light it with gas, that gas is pressurized, that comes from a pump. So there's a lot of, and that's just examples from everyday life. So the point is, this is really, uh, uh, if there was a secure, low cost, efficient way to monitor vibration, it would make life better across the board in a lot of different ways. So how people do that today, there are portable meters and at the bottom of the slide, you can see some portable meters um, that people go around with kind of pump by pump or motor by motor. There's portable analyzers that provide more information. There's a wi wired ways to do this. Um, there's a, a, a stationary kind of continuous way to do vibration sensing. And then there's a wireless and that uh, image in the bottom right hand corner is the Advantech WISE 2410. It's worth saying that vibration there's vibration sensing and then there's vibration analysis. And those, the sensing is a part of the analysis, but analysis is a very deep, uh, a, a specific science, if you will, uh, to understand the physics of it. If you go to the next slide, I, I do want to talk about why uh, LoRaWAN is a particularly good fit for this. So it's, it's a, a LoRaWAN is great for in, uh, uh, it, it penetrating into all the different reaches of a building. And oh, by the way, most vibration sensing applications are indoors, right? It's a compressor facility on a gas line that's in a brick building uh, uh, on that gas line or, or in a water treatment plant or in the basement of a large building. Um, and I'll show an example of that if you go to the next slide. Um, this is a, a sort of a brief sort of use case, if you will, just describing the way that the Advantech WISE 6610, that's a LoRaWAN gateway, communicates over LoRaWAN to those WISE 2410s you see on a, um, on a pump uh, within, basically a pump system within this cooling tower application. So remember I said that this is uh, star topology, so it's making a point-to-point -point connection. The, the gateway is making a point-to-point -point connection over LoRaWAN to those vibration sensors and then uh, feeding that data back into the SCADA system. There's a lot more I could say about this. I want to be sensitive to time. If there's any quick questions, be happy to take those. But uh, I can pause now and, 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 and leave it at that, Tim. Thank you, <clears throat> Andrew. Um, you know, this particular segment is really fascinating. And it's actually one that most of us don't think about in the context of IoT. The fact that you have all of these motors and all of these different devices that actually have to be monitored in an IoT world. You guys are providing some pretty interesting stuff. And I learned a lot from what you said today. One question I have for you is when you actually uh, uh, put this together, I'm assuming this is a cloud-based solution. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, there's an age. It, it can be, people can see data locally if they want to, but certainly most applications that Gateway is providing is feeding data up to an MQTT broker and into a cloud application like Azure or AWS or, or others. And in, in, in this particular instance, I'm assuming you have a sales force that goes out and actually, uh, or a, a team of uh, individuals who actually work with those who are uh, uh, putting it together. That's right. Yeah, a lot of our resale partners are, are have some specialty in vibration analysis, and so that's uh, that's that's a big part of our process. Well, we've run out of time, but thank you so much. That was fascinating.